I've been wearing these AirPods Max almost every day for the past three and a half years. And while things were fine in the first year, it wasn't perfect. These have improved greatly over the last two years. So in this video, I wanna explain how these have improved, how they've held up over time, and just my overall experience with the AirPods Max and if they're still worth buying in 2024. So let's start with how these have held up over time because if you were to just read the headlines, you would think that these AirPods Max were just simply not made to last because we saw so many posts about the mesh headband ripping, the ear cups deteriorating, and the big one was condensation gate where users would report liquid building up inside of the ear cups. And as somebody who bought these on day one, I have not had any of those issues. And I've used these in a number of different scenarios. Like for example, I use these while traveling. I use these while in the gym working out and sweating. I wear these while watching movies on the couch and of course the main use case for me at least is I use these pretty much every single day for work when I'm sitting at my desk and looking at my mesh headband I do not see any rips or tears but that's not to say I have not worried about it because I definitely have it is pretty tender here like if you were to zip this up in a bag like with a zipper it would likely rip and that is a scenario I've faced multiple times because you know sometimes I have to forcefully stuff these in my bag because of the bra case like when you have a bag when you're traveling I've had to you know push those down and then I would zip it and it would get really close to hitting this mesh headband so I have worried about that and speaking of this case and just traveling in general let's start there because the AirPods Max are still the best headphones on the market for traveling hands down I would forget my wallet before I forgot my AirPods Max when I'm going to catch a flight the active noise cancellation is terrific and it blocks out all those babies crying almost all of that airplane noise especially when you have music playing at near 50% or higher. You know, I've used the AirPods Pro on the plane before as well, and there is just simply no comparison. The AirPods Max, obviously these are over the ear headphones, so of course they're gonna be better, but it's a big difference. However, I will say that you do have to be careful with transparency mode on these AirPods Max, specifically when on an airplane, and that's because this will make everything around you extremely loud. We don't have the adaptive transparency mode that the AirPods Pro 2 got, where it's gonna block out noises above a certain decibel level to keep your eardrum safe. Unfortunately, the AirPods Max did not get that feature over all the different firmware updates over the years. The AirPods Max did not get any of those adaptive audio features. So they did not get the conversation awareness, the personalized volume, or that adaptive noise control, which is just unfortunate since these cost a lot more than the AirPods Pro 2. But again, it is held back by the chipset inside. We do have the H1 chip inside, whereas all those features came as, you know, part of the H2 chip. Now, even though we did not get those adaptive audio features, the AirPods Max have still improved greatly over the years, more specifically in the last two years via firmware updates. Most notably for me has been automatic switching, which is where you can you know, play audio on an Apple device and your headphones start automatically playing you know, the audio from that device. So for example, I would always have music playing on my iPhone and then I would pause it and play something on my Mac, but it would never pick up on it. For the whole first year, that was terrible on the AirPods Max. It was unbearable, especially when using the Mac, but over time and over the firmware updates that the AirPods Max have received, that has gotten so much better. And now I can actually, you know, utilize the automatic switching feature on not just the Mac, but also from iPhone to iPhone, iPhone to iPad, whatever the case may be. And it works almost flawlessly. It's still not perfect, but it's much better now. And just like with all models of AirPods, when you put these on your head, they will automatically connect to whatever device you have in front of you that is playing media. That's one of my favorite things about AirPods in general, especially with the Apple TV. These have gotten so much better at pairing with that Apple TV as well. And one of the more recent firmware updates for the AirPods Max actually added a new feature. So most of the firmware updates have just had enhancements and you know bug fixes, but a new feature recently came to the AirPods Max and that is press to mute. So this is while on phone calls and it just makes taking calls much more convenient and even less of a reason to take your phone out of your pocket when you can mute yourself by just pressing on on the button. And some of the other features that have come through firmware updates has been the ability to activate Siri without saying the hey part. So you can do that on the AirPods Max 
which is nice. And also personalized spatial audio came through a firmware update and that makes spatial audio significantly better on the AirPods Max especially. And then of course, active noise cancellation and transparency mode have both improved over the years. And some people say it's still not as good as day one, but I disagree. I think it's pretty much the same as day one. It's just gotten a little bit better over the years and all the refinements and firmware updates. Now, let me go back to that point I made about wearing these with the Apple TV, because I feel like this is one of the most underrated scenarios to use the AirPods Max in. Most people just use these for traveling or while sitting at a desk, but trust me, take a minute if you have an Apple TV and put the AirPods Max on while you're watching a movie. It is amazing. You have spatial audio, you have amazing bass, you can hear the dialogue perfectly clear during loud action scenes, and most importantly, you're not waking everybody up in the house while you're watching a movie at full blast on your AirPods Max. I mean, I just think these make for a great set of theater headphones. And that comes from somebody who has two HomePod second generation set up in my entertainment room. So I always have good audio, whatever the case may be, but I still sometimes find myself going back to the AirPods Max when I want to sit down and watch a movie and really pay attention to it. But even if you're not watching a movie or a TV show, maybe you just listen to music, you listen to podcasts, the AirPods Max, in my opinion, have the best sound profile of any headphones on the market. And yes, I've tried all of them from Bose, from Sony, everybody. I still think the AirPods Max are the best, especially when you set up personalized spatial audio. And if you don't know what that is, basically with iOS 16, Apple added this feature that allows you to scan your ears with your iPhone to get a more specific and immersive sound profile. And to me, it improved the quality greatly of spatial audio. And most others have said the same. I've also had a lot of people ask me about the phone call quality and the microphone quality with the AirPods Max. And at this point, you know, for the past three, three and a half years, I've taken hundreds of phone calls, Zoom calls, Google Meet calls, whatever the case may be. And I've not had one person say that my microphone quality has been bad. And I've been using the built-in microphones with the AirPods Max. So nobody said that my sound quality is bad. And I'm also able to hear everybody perfectly fine through the actual headphones themselves. Okay, so now we need to discuss the comfort because this is another area where a lot of people had reservations. A lot of people did not want to buy the AirPods Max because they were so heavy and they just seemed uncomfortable. People would complain about the comfort. And let me just say, do not judge a book by its cover. And I say that because these are made mostly of metal and that's a lot of people's big drawback if they've never put these on their head. They're like, I'm not gonna put a big bulky pair of metal headphones on my head. That's gonna give me a headache. And let me just say, you know, I've been wearing these for three, three and a half years now, pretty much every single weekday for a minimum of four hours a day, like at a time. And I've not had any issues with discomfort whatsoever. They might be heavy in the hand, but they are not heavy on the head. And that has a lot to do with the weight distribution of how these telescoping arms are and also the mesh headband, how that kind of feels and fits on your head. And that's another thing I need to mention is that the telescoping arms are still holding up great. I mean, these give you a perfect fit. They can stop on a dime, you know, anywhere you put them. There's not little notches where you only have, you know, a certain height that you can get to. You can position these however you want on either side. They're not tied to each other. So you can put either side high or low and you can get really precise with the fitment on your head, which is really nice. And these have also held up great over time. These have, you know, the same give that they had on day one. So I mentioned at the gym earlier and working out with the AirPods Max on. And while I have done that, I still prefer the AirPods Pro for working out and also for grocery shopping. Like, yes, the AirPods Max are more comfortable and they're less likely to fall out of your ears, but it, it, this is a weird reason to say this. The noise cancellation is just too good on the AirPods Max to wear in public in my opinion, especially when you're at somewhere like a gym or at a grocery store when you might need to say something to another person or you might need to hear another person. The noise cancellation is just so strong that you will not hear any of that. Whereas if you had the AirPods Pro 2, you have conversation awareness. So if you were to talk or if somebody were to talk to you and you respond back, your AirPods would automatically you know, go into that transparency mode and you'd be able to hear them. As for the battery life, even after three and a half years, the AirPods Max hold their charge so well that I really don't ever have to think about battery life with the AirPods Max, like at all. And now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever had to charge these while wearing them 
or like stop listening to what I'm listening to because they ran out of battery. I don't believe that's ever happened in the three and a half years I've owned them. Apple rates the AirPods Max for 20 hours with active noise cancellation turned on. And while I've never personally timed it, that sounds about right. Like I charge these maybe once every three days, and it's always after I finish working. I just simply charge these. Once I'm done working on the you know second or third day, it's usually when I notice the battery percentage getting below 20%. That's when I plug them in and I charge them up overnight while I sleep. And the next day I go in there, I unplug it, and my AirPods Max are good again for another three days or so. But I will say that I wish we had USB-C on the AirPods Max. These still have lightning, and these are the reason. These and the Magic Keyboard are the only reason I still keep a lightning cord around. Oh, and we need to talk about the Brawl case because this is easily the number one most memed on, most hated on aspect of the AirPods Max. And I honestly do not understand why. I'll be honest, I've never had any issues with the AirPods Max case, but there was one point in time, about a year and a half to two years in, where I was like, okay, I want a hard shell case. I'm tired of this Brawl case. It takes up too much vertical space, and I feel like this is going to get ripped. That came after I almost, you know, zipped this up. I pretty much ordered it right away and uh, I had the big round case for the AirPods Max like a hard shell case and I hated it I returned it within a week and then that's when I realized that the bra case is perfect for the AirPods Max. And I understand that might be a hot take, but I've used a hard shell case. So I, you know, it's not speculation for me. I've actually used it and I went back to the Brawl case. This thing is just perfect for traveling because it does not take up a big footprint. I think that's the number one reason. It does not take up much space. Like the case for the, uh, the Apple Vision Pro is huge. Traveling with that thing is gonna be a nightmare. Now, if that had a case like this, it would be a lot easier. It's a lot more discreet. Now, yes, this does take up more vertical space, but it's such a slim profile that it's great to travel with even if you're not on a plane just a road trip or whatever it's just such a slim and nice profile that it works and it protects all you know of the vital parts like the hard shell right here the soft cups right here you have a little cutout to charge the only thing you ever really have to worry about is the mesh headband and i've never had any issues with that so with all that being said should you buy the airpods max in 2024 and beyond and i would say that if you're somebody who's able to wear over the ear headphones for multiple hours a day almost every day of the week whether that be at home or at work then i would say yes absolutely these are worth buying in 2024 2024 especially if you have multiple apple devices that can take advantage of auto switching you know these are tremendously built headphones with excellent sound and when you add in all those extra features that's just like the icing on top and honestly it's hard to see how the airpods max second generation are really going to get much better than the airpods max first generation like in terms of design in my opinion, how can Apple make this better? I mean, these are near perfect in my opinion. So I think for the AirPods Max 2, we might see obviously a USB-C port. We might see better microphones, like more microphones to make noise cancellation, transparency, and just the overall uh, microphone quality when talking on calls. That might get better. But the overall design, I think is going to be very similar. Same with the overall sound profile. The sound profile of the AirPods Max 2 are probably going to be about the same. Like we're probably just going to see a new chipset inside, like the H2 or maybe even the H3 chip that's going to add some of those software features like we saw in the AirPods Pro 2. So definitely some improvements internally, but for the main majority of things that people use, the AirPods Max 4, I still think the AirPods Max first generation are going to continue being great for years and years down the road. So for the going price of $499 or sometimes $450 on Amazon, I do think these are worth the cost. But if you don't mind buying used headphones, I would strongly suggest picking up a pair of used ones over on eBay for around 300 bucks. That way you save yourself around $150. That's honestly probably the best idea given how long ago these were released. So that is my take on the AirPods Max after multiple years of pretty much daily use. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe for more AirPods, AirPods Max videos in the future. And if you have the AirPods Max, let me know in the comment down below how they've been holding up for you. Are you happy with your purchase? Are you still on on the fence about them, let me know your thoughts. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.